The gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentlelady from New York, Ms. Clark, for uh, five minutes. Thank you, uh, Chair Johnson and Ranking Member Tonko, for holding uh, today's hearing. And I'd also like to thank Administer Administrator Reagan for being here to testify this morning. I commend your leadership in ensuring environmental justice, combating climate change, and protecting public health, which are clearly top priorities for the EPA. As you are well aware, air pollution from diesel fueled trucks places an equal burden on communities of color. Exposure to air pollution like particulate matter and nitrogen oxide is linked to a whole laundry list of health problems, including asthma, heart disease, and stroke. The failure of our governments to, in, to secure clean air for our communities leads to thousands of preventable uh, premature deaths each year. The last time you were before this committee, I asked about administration's clean trucks plan, which set emission standards by heavy duty vehicles starting in model year 2027. Now that the clean, clean trucks rule has been finalized, do you have any estimate of how many deaths will be pre prevented because of the new emission standard? Well, I, we definitely have that number. Uh, I will be sure to have my staff get that number to you for those years 2027 and beyond for those heavy duty vehicles. Wonderful. Um, multiple programs like DARA and newly created clean school bus program focus on removing dirty diesel vehicles from our roads, but don't specifically prioritize electrification of other sources of emissions in the transportation sector, like refrigeration units on trucks or port equipment. I was glad to see the EPA recently released RFIs for the clean heavy duty vehicles and clean ports programs created under the Inflation Reduction Act, which will help speed emissions reductions in this space. However, I wanted to ask about another provision in the IRA related to reducing diesel emissions. I worked with my colleagues on this committee to ensure the law included $60 million for reducing diesel emissions for good movement in low income and disadvantaged communities. This provision was drafted with the express intent to ensure the eligible uses included the electrification of equipment outside of the vehicle's engine itself, like the electrification of trucks refrigeration units or e-trues. What is the status of implementation of the Section 60104 Good Movement Program, and how is the EPA considering e-trues with regard to reducing diesel emissions in communities that are disproportionately impacted by these types of emissions? Well, thank you for that question, and thank you for your leadership on this topic. Because of the conversations we've had, uh, we've made it a priority. Uh, just last fall, we issued a tool that specifically tracks emissions from these transportation refrigeration units. Uh, we're, we're building uh, a repository so that we can understand where they are, what the impact is, and we're actually trying to marriage that, marry that tool to these TICTAC grants or these EJ grants so that communities can apply for those grants and address some of these issues quicker than probably the federal government can. As a matter of fact, I'm pleased to see the agency's recent announcement of the Environmental Justice Tic Tac program, which will build capacity and remove barriers for environmental justice communities to navigate federal grant programs. How does the agency's budget request support the critical work of these centers and connect the agency's broader goals of prioritizing environmental justice? You know, it's a significant priority for us, and we don't pretend that the federal government has all the answers. So whether in New York or McDowell County, West Virginia, these Tic Tacs will work with local groups, uh, local grassroots organizations who know their communities best, and we will provide technical assistance to these communities so that they are prepared and armed with grant writers and the understanding of the accountability for these federal grants and be positioned for the over $3 billion in environmental justice and climate justice grants provided by the Inflation Reduction Act. Well, Administrator Regan, I want to thank you for your diligence and your hard work, your commitment uh, to clean air, uh, to uh, cleaning up our environment. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.